I'm really sunburned because I went to the beach and my skin has not seen the light of day in months, so it was really sun sensitive. Hello everybody! This might be the last video that I film in this apartment because I am moving this week. Yay! Yay! Which just means that my apartment is just an organized mess right now. But I have some egg whites that I went to get rid of, so I thought for this week's video, I would show you guys the science behind making the perfect meringue. Welcome to Chemistry of Cooking, where I tell you the science behind your favorite foods, and today I'm going to show you how to make meringues and the science behind them. So meringues are a very interesting type of dessert or, I don't know, concoction. It's basically just whipped egg whites and sugar. Sugar helps it stabilize so it becomes this beautiful whipped cloud-like thing that can be used alone as a cookie, which is what we are doing, or it can be used to top certain things, or you can use it to just eat out of the bowl like my mom does. If you think meringues might be a little bit hard because they don't involve some of the more typical cooking things, don't be intimidated. Meringue is super easy to make and honestly I love to make it. It's a great thing to do especially if you make ice cream or a pudding and you use the egg yolks and suddenly you have all these egg whites that you don't necessarily know what to do with. Meringues are a great way to get rid of them. I'm gonna make the meringues right now and then I will talk to you guys about the science and stuff later. I have some egg whites right here. I've got about a half a cup and then I have one cup of sugar. You don't necessarily need a recipe to make meringues, especially if you're just trying to get rid of some egg whites. You may not necessarily have a recipe that corresponds exactly to how many egg whites you have. So what I do is I just do a two to one ratio. So you use a half a cup of egg whites. That's just how many egg whites I want to use. And then I'm using a half a cup or one cup, sorry, of sugar. And then I've got a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. There it is, it's so tiny. And you can also use vinegar or lemon juice. I have used vinegar in meringue before and I feel like it almost made the meringue more buttery feeling, but that may just be the recipe I used at the time. So those are the ingredients we have. And then I also, oh my oven's preheated. And then I've also got a piping bag if you don't have a piping bag, don't worry. Just grab a Ziploc bag of some kind and literally cut a hole in it. I'm just using this because I have them left over from a cookie party I had a while ago. And then I've got two cookie sheets and real quick, I'm going to line them with parchment. Line your sheet with parchment. Don't grease the pan because that's going to ruin the egg whites. But line them with parchment because they will not come off the pan if you don't. Real quick, I am making regular like vanilla meringues. Well, they don't really have vanilla in them, but I'm just making like plain meringue for the sake of this video. But you can make like chocolate meringue or strawberry or whatever you feel. I just kind of like the taste of like plain meringue. But yeah, they'll taste good whatever. <laughs> also for this video, I am using an electric mixer, but if you want a good arm workout, you are welcome to whip the egg whites by hand. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna take our egg whites, make sure that they are room temperature or just like slightly warm. Don't just take them out of the fridge, make sure that they sit out for an hour or two. Luba, uh-uh, get off. So I'm gonna take the egg whites and I'm just going to plop them into the bowl. Make sure that your bowl is clean. Egg whites are super temperamental and they will not froth up if your bowl is dirty or has like some leftover gunk on it from the last time you made cookies. Another thing you wanna make sure with the egg whites is make sure that there is not any yolk in the egg whites whatsoever. Any kind of egg yolk is going to cause the egg whites to not froth up. You need the egg whites to be super pure. And then I'm going to take my cream of tartar and plop it into the bowl. And now for the fun part, we just turn it on. All right, so once your egg whites are frothy, slowly add your sugar. All 
All right, so if you want to know if your meringue is well enough, it should just, it should not run off of the whisk very easily. So as you can see, we've got a nice, stiff and beautiful meringue. All right, so now that our meringues are super stiff and you can do this little number with it, it's good! I don't have the courage to just hold it upside down um, like some people do. Next thing you're gonna do is lick the meringue off of the whisk. And for all you people being like, you can't eat raw egg. You can eat raw egg whites, so fine, I promise. And it's worth it, okay? Then I have one pan with parchment on it. And if you are like, well, my parchment keeps rolling up like this and I can't do anything with it. Take a spatula, take a little bit of your meringue and just plop it onto the pan and it will create sort of a glue that will also not damage your meringue. Again, we don't want to use grease in this situation. So just take a little bit of meringue and put it underneath and it will be sticky enough where it will hold everything in its place. So now for the easy part. I am just going to do little droplets. Some people like to get like the fancy tips and make little meringue flowers, but I just like them to look like little droplets. So that's what I'm going to do. And the good thing about meringue is that it doesn't spread out in the oven very easily. So don't worry too much, like give a little bit of space in between each meringue drop, but don't worry too much about giving as much space in between them because they're really not going to um, spread out too much. Also, if you just don't want a pipe, you are welcome to just get a spoon and treat it like drop cookies. Um, but piping is just quicker, for me at least. And I don't like super giant meringues. I like small ones, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, well, I'm probably going to speed this up because this is gonna be pretty easy stuff. <laughs> All right, all over my hands. We're going to the spoon method. So now I'm just going to put the meringue into the oven. It's gonna heat really, really slowly. And we're gonna put it in there for about one and a half hours. There was a little bit extra into the bowl. And so one good thing you could do with extra meringue is just grab a spoon and eat it straight out of the bowl. This is my cat. She's annoying now that I put her on camera. What's wrong? The light hurts. All right, go play. All right, so now that the meringues are in the oven and they've got about an hour and 12 minutes left on them, but we might need to cook them a little bit longer. But while that's happening, we are gonna look at the science portion. Also, the camera shakes. It's because my cat is playing with the light pole. Let's dive into the three ingredients that go in a typical meringue. Egg whites, sugar, and cream of tartar, or some other kind of acid such as vinegar or lemon juice. So egg whites are 90% water and 10% protein. Protein is basically a bunch of amino acids. And if you remember a little bit of high school biology, then you may know how proteins work. Normally, it starts off as a long chain of amino acids, and then it starts to fold and fold and fold and fold and fold until it becomes a big tangled mess. Imagine it like one of those landline telephones with a little like spirally cord. Imagine one of those just like all tangled up and that's pretty much what a protein looks like. Why is this important? Egg white protein is completely folded up until you denature them. And we can denature these proteins either through heat or by constantly whisking it. Denaturing these proteins by heat would be the equivalent of say frying an egg. You would see that the egg whites would literally turn white and that shows that the enzymes have denatured or the proteins have denatured. And we can also denature them when we put the egg whites in the mixer and we forcibly whisk it with the little whisk spokes, just, you know, denaturing those proteins. But at the same time, they are also refolding those proteins. The cream of tartar or another kind of acid also helps in denaturing those proteins. Denaturing, by the way, is just those proteins unfolding. Any kind of fat will prevent those proteins from denaturing, which is why you have to be super careful when you separate your eggs, especially if you are whipping the egg whites, because you do not want any yolk in the egg whites. It will prevent them from whipping. Even if you think, oh, it's just a little bit of egg yolk, it won't make that big of a deal. 
Yes, it will. It will make a big deal. The sugar will dissolve in the water of the egg whites and form kind of this like syrupy consistency and that will help form the structure of meringues and stabilize them. The more sugar that you add to the egg whites, the stiffer the meringue, which is why if you're making meringue cookies, you want the ratio to be about two to one, so two parts sugar, one part egg white. If you're using the meringue as just like a topping, the ratio is generally going to be less. Sugar will also make the meringue pores smaller, and believe it or not, there is research on how to make meringues that are perfectly formed in such a way where the pore size is either really big or really small. So cream of tartar slash vinegar slash lemon juice is an acid and basically it does two things. For starters, it balances the pH of the egg whites. If you are a little rusty on your knowledge of pH, then I will give you a quick rundown. It's basically a scale to show how acidic or how basic a certain substance is. So the scale goes from one to 14, one being super, super acidic and 14 being very, very basic. And cream of tartar will generally fall in the seven or less category. A pH of seven means that it's completely neutral and that would be water, deionized water specifically because the regular tap water that you have has like minerals in it and other things to help keep it clean, but also just to help us get more minerals in our body. So the water that comes out of your sink is not going to be exactly seven. It's probably like you know, 7.4 or something. Egg whites are a little bit basic. And so when you add a little bit of an acid to it, it helps neutralize the pH. And therefore the egg whites are going to be less charged. So like the particles are not gonna have as much of an electrical charge and therefore they're not going to repel each other as easily. This can be a little bit weird to hear, but everything has an electrical charge to a certain degree. When we add an acid to a base or just change the pH a little bit, we're lessening the electrical charge that is in the egg white proteins. And therefore they're not going to repel each other as much. Hey guys, it's editing me here. And I realized that I didn't really explain too much what a charged particle was or what it meant for an atom to have a charge. And so I'm gonna give you an alternative explanation. So here I have two water molecules and the red one is oxygen and the gray is the hydrogen. And so both of them are bound by the charges. So I've got some plus signs to represent the positive charge for hydrogen molecules and the negative charge is on the oxygen. And so the hydrogen is going to be attracted to the oxygen because it has the opposite charge. Opposite charges attract. That's like one of the number one rules of chemistry is that opposites attract. And so the hydrogen is also going to pull towards the oxygen on the surrounding molecules. And so it's not going to want to go towards other hydrogen molecules. It's actually going to repel it. Um, and it wants to be as far away from any other hydrogen molecules as much as it possibly can. And so when we make meringue, we want to add an acid to it to kind of break up these charges a little bit and mess up those hard and fast rules a little bit so that the proteins can denature and also so that air can be added into the mixture and make a very light and fluffy meringue. So that is pretty much an alternative explanation of what a charge is on a particle. You can use any kind of acid that you have on you, any kind of safe eating acid, not like acid acid. When we bake our meringues, we also want to bake it at a very low temperature. Generally, I bake my meringues at around 200 to 250 degrees, depending on either the recipe. For this recipe, I use 225 degrees, which is very, very low to bake something at. But sugar contains heat very, very well. If you've ever been burned by molten sugar, you will know that sugar contains heat very well. So we want to bake it slowly so that it doesn't burn. The only time when we would want to burn our meringue is if we are making a nice meringue topping, say for our lemon meringue pie, and you want to get those nice burnt meringue swirls in the pie. 
but other than that, you don't want to burn your meringue. All right, so here are the finished meringues. They kind of started to brown a little bit in the oven, so it's a good thing that I checked them on time before they actually started to burn, but here they are, and we are gonna split one open. so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you want to see more of me you can definitely click on the link at the end screen to see my last video that I posted it's likely that if you enjoyed this video then you will probably enjoy the other videos I post so feel free to subscribe to my channel and if you want to support me feel free to support me on patreon and I will link that down below all right I will see you guys in my next video goodbye